So our next speaker is our CEJS resident musician, Alex Chapman, and Alex is going to talk to us about smallholder farmer adaptation to climate change. So Alex, floor is yours. Great. Thanks, Dr. Thompson. Can you all hear me all right? All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Alex Chapman. My pronouns are he, him. I'm currently a senior at Seattle University right now studying environmental studies. And the research I'm going to present to you today is actually an extension of my capstone research that I did for class last quarter, looking at the intersection of climate change and smallholder farmer adaptation in order to understand this question. How does social capital influence smallholder farmer climate change adaptation in low income countries? So this is a lot. If you don't understand some of these terms, we're going to go ahead and unpack all of this right now. Climate change can be understood as variable and unpredictable weather due to the increase of greenhouse gases. This is, results in floods and droughts, extreme weather events, and a variety of other weather events. Unfortunately, climate change does not impact everybody equally. Vulnerable populations are disproportionately affected, especially farmers of low-income countries who are particularly vulnerable to the impacts of climate change for a variety of reasons, which is really critical to understand because as you can see from that statistics from the World Bank, there's a large, large portion of the adult population that makes a living through the agriculture sector. The research also, show, also shows that 90% of the farms in the world are smallholder farmers. These are small farms that are located in these low income countries. So we can see that it's really vital that these farmers do figure out a way to adapt to climate change impacts. The, the adaptation can take the form of um, irrigation schemes, crop diversity or a bunch of other things um, that I won't go into detail, but there's a lot that is going on. And adaptation is seen as an important policy option in reducing the impacts of climate change. So the core focus of this research is the influence of social capital, the influence that social capital has on adaptation. And social capital can be understood as a multifaceted construct that has both structural and cognitive components that exist at both micro and macro levels. So to boil that down, that's basically the social dynamics and social relationships that people have within their communities and outside their communities. The three aspects of social capital that the research really focuses on that is really vital to all of this is social bonding, social bridging, and trust. So social bonding is the close-knit relationships that people are gonna have. This is gonna be with their family members or your friends or your other community members, while social bridging is relationships that you're gonna have outside of the community. It might be farmers in a different community or relationships that you have with uh, institutional agents like um, government agents or NGO workers as well. And trust can be understood as the confidence that someone has that another person will act on commitments with reliability and reciprocity. And all these dynamics are interplaying all the time and are really important in the exchange of information. So this exchange of information is really vital in providing these farmers information on when to adapt and how to adapt and what adaptation measures to actually adopt. So if there's not trust between these farmers when they share information or if there's not trust between government agents and these community members, then the exchange of information is gonna go nowhere and it's not gonna turn into action and it's not gonna turn into adaptation. To, to complicate the matter further, institutional intervention is actually seen as a very important role, has a very important role in all of this. And it is seen that institutional interventions in communities can actually boost adaptation, whereas communities that don't have any institutional intervention are less, like to, less likely to, to adopt adaptation measures. It's also understood that institutional interventions that don't take into account the local participation and local engagement are actually damaging to these adaptation measures. And communities that are able to engage with the institutions are more likely to adopt adaptation measures. So we can see that it's really important that these institutions go in and they engage with the communities and they hear out all the, um, the community members and they understand all these aspects of social capital and these social relationships, because these are very complex and they're gonna really influence how these, um, these implementations of these interventions are actually gonna play out in the adaptation of these communities. And finally, just to bring it on home to Seattle and the communities that you're in, it's really important to also engage with the communities. Whatever climate uh, policy or intervention that we're proposing and that we all you know, are pushing for in our actions, we need to understand these social dynamics in these communities and we need to really understand 
how these communities are going to engage with the interventions that we're putting forward. So to, just to sum it all up really quickly, these social dynamics are really complicated and really complex, but they are influencing adaptation in a variety of ways. And these institutions need to understand that. We need to engage with the communities with all of this. This is all super complicated and I'm just barely scratching the surface and there just needs to be a lot more research in all of this. Thank you and feel free to email me if you have any further questions on all these complicated matters. Thank you.